Hello there, this is Nera from Toolchefs and welcome to this new video. Today we're going to have a look at the new variation workflow that we have introduced in Atom Speaks. Um, so we have gathered a lot of feedback in the past years about how we could improve the, you know, the, our variations and we have decided in this uh, new version to focus mainly on in this area. Um, so uh, these new changes don't mean that you will have to rebuild your old setup. Everything will still work as before. But what, what we have done is that we have introduced new features that will make your life much easier and also will make the variation workflow uh, more powerful. So to go back and have an overview of uh, how the variations were working before, uh, if you didn't have any Python developer that would make like, a, you know, like the, work, the entire variation workflow for you, uh, if, you, if you were using Atom's tools, you would have to, uh, in Maya or Udini, build render layers. So in render, render layers in Maya and in Udini, you would be, have to build takes. Uh, and each render layer or take would uh, represent a variation. Uh, we provided tools for building these render layers. Uh, and then you would have to use, again, ad, uh, other Atom's tools for exporting the, these render layers or takes into variations. The variations were like a JSON file and all the geometries and materials were, ex were being exported to. At this point, then you would use this JSON file in another scene. So we would import the variations in another scene via this JSON file. And, um, and at this point, you could use the variations in your simulation. So you, would, you could say this, um, this agent should use this variation and so on. The problem with this workflow is that uh, it was a bit uh, uh, tricky to change the variations uh, um, when you were like uh, working on the crowds. Sometimes you would have to go back and uh, recache, uh, re-export all your variations. So um, again, the tools that we have, we have, pro we are, um, we have created will simplify, especially this, this last part, uh, um, quite a lot. So the changes that we've introduced, uh, we'll go through all of them now, and then we'll, uh, in separate videos, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll actually see how they're going to work. So we have changed the variation builder slightly to have uh, a few more options. Uh, we're going to have a look in this video. Then in the next video, we're going to have a look at the variation tree which is a, a way for defining uh, variations uh, dynamically uh, by providing some logic that you can, uh, you can define. And then uh, variation overrides. With the variation overrides, you can um, uh, you know, add uh, pieces of uh, clothing or props uh, to your variations or even remove items if you don't want them to, if you don't want an agent, for instance, to have glasses and so on, you can create a variation override. These two, uh, so both the variation tree and variation overrides go in, um, along with the, this variation JSON that I was mentioning before, and you will be able to define them in the variation manager. Then uh, in another video, we're going to have a look at the changes that uh, we have done to the variation module. In the variation module, you will be able to assign the variation, um, but also the variation type that are defined in variation tree. Uh, you will be able to assign variation overrides uh, that are uh, um, defined in the variation override table uh, in the variation manager. But also from within the variation module, you'll also be able to um, you know, create new overrides and add, and add geometry dynamically uh, and, assign, and assigning materials too. Uh, after this, we're going to have to look uh, at the variation debugger, which just is a, just a nice way to see how you can debug your variations. Um, and then uh, the final, the, the fin in the final video, we're going to look at how you can build materials uh, um, at render time. Uh, this can be done uh, um, directly from within the, by defining some parameters in the variation manager, but without having any material uh, file. So you wouldn't have to, uh, you wouldn't need to have a, a NAS file uh, or a rib file or a VRC file and, and so on, or a REST file for Redshift. Um, when, when you want to render. You, you can actually define some parameters in the Variation Manager and then you will be able to render straight away from there. Okay, so the first tool that uh, we're going to have a look at is the Variation Builder. And uh, uh, in this tool, we have done some minor changes that uh, uh, were needed for, uh, you know, for these new features. So first of all, you don't need anymore to have uh, render layers or uh, uh, takes in Udini. This is because uh, now you can uh, enable these export all geos and materials. And what this will do will actually get all the geometries in the scene, all the materials for the selected renderer. So for Arnold, we will look for uh, standard AI standard surface, but also for Blin and Lambert's. For V-Ray, we look for V-Ray materials. For Renderman, we look for uh, uh, Pixar surfaces and for Redshift, for Redshift uh, uh, materials. 
For the material attributes only, this was called before preview only. Uh, it just makes more sense to have material attributes. What we do is like we cache out uh, the attributes for uh, Lambert's, uh, the Lambert's and Blins that we find in the scene. And then basically those, uh, the, the values for those uh, um, materials are cached within the uh, preview section of each material in the variation JSON. Uh, so once again, you don't need the real the variations now. If you still have them in the scene and you click run later, they will be exported. But because we don't need them, we can even delete them. And if I refresh, they won't appear anymore. Before you needed to have something in this list if you wanted to click run. But now is if you have uh, the export geos and materials and you fill these parameters here, uh, these basically won't be needed anymore. So you won't need any render layer. So here you can provide the agent type. We can say I want the um, oh yeah, sorry. So this is the variation. So we call it variations. And then we say I want the skeleton file, which is this one skeleton root is here. And then as 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 you um, as you can see here, the run button just got enabled. If I deselect this option, it gets disabled again. Uh, let's export it for Arnold. Uh, one thing that has changed in, in the big textures. Here option is that we have provided uh, um, a couple of new parameters. So we, you can define the, uh, the resolution for the textures that get bakes, baked, uh, but also the light intensity of the light that is uh, used when baking. So this, this value actually changes depending on the render that you select. And we have uh, figured out that these were the best values that we're rendering, uh, we're baking your materials. Um, why we have done this is simply because uh, when you bake textures, um, these textures might be used uh, later if you don't have any um, any um, uh, material files. So if you don't have as files and so on, um, then basically you might need to have like a bet like a higher resolution um, texture uh, for rendering later. Um, for the if you use materials attributes only, the problem is that uh, Maya doesn't let us uh, uh, render more than uh, more than uh, 124 by 124. So uh, yeah, this uh, this uh, unfortunately is like a limitation. Uh, but in the, for this case, I'm gonna just select Arnold. I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna deselect big textures for now, um, and then I'm gonna click run. So again, this what it's gonna do is just gonna export all the uh, geometries from the scene. But also the materials that we'll find that uh, uh, are acceptable for uh, um, for rendering in Arnold. Okay, now the geometries and the materials have been saved on disk, so we can have a look at the variation tree and variation override. See you in the next video.